Jennifer Edwards, Psychic Medium. Hello, Janine Castle, astrologer to the stars. I hope. <laughs> if you had a good today, today I thought we would talk about our best and worst experiences when we've gone for a reading. Oh, let's do that. Because okay, it's going to be fun because I've got a couple of really good stories. Oh, well, you and go first. I think for me as a reader, you learn a lot about how to be a good reader by having bad readings. Yeah, you and do. And also good readings. And they stick in your mind and you think, I'll never do that ever. Yep. <laughs> or I'm going to do that next time I do a reading. So I think it's a really important education if you're starting out as a reader, get as many readings as you can, good and bad, because they will make the reader that you yeah, end up Yeah, having. because it, you certainly learn what to say and what not to say because it impacts you. Man, it can be hard. And I used to have plenty of clients who complained about some of the readers they went to, you know, being too uh, belligerent or too... Um, oh, saying terrible things terrible things really they should never have said mm. so it's always um you know an experience you're quite right it's good mm. i'm quite shocked at what i hear yeah me too so i'm going to start by telling you about a reading hey. i had two years ago great let's do and it i ended up having this reading very spontaneously I was doing a consult with a client and she walked out and I said, where are you off to? She said, I'm going to have a reading with this well-known psychic in Brisbane. Can't tell you who it is. And I said, oh, who is it? She told me all about him. And for some reason I thought, you know, I haven't had a reading in a long time. Um, so I rang up and he was booked up for I don't know, three months or something. And so I said, oh, fine. I went on a waiting list. That always amuses me how anyone can be booked up for three months. And so I was actually driving to Brisbane one day and I got a phone call to say there's been a cancellation. Would I like a reading in the afternoon? Oh, well, that was meant to be. And I took that as an, a good sign. And yep. I said, well, I'm going to be in Brisbane. Tell me the address, right? So I rocked up. And it was a house that was sitting in a, like a three acre paddock in suburbia. And there was no signage or anything. And so I parked the car and I walked into this driveway with very long grass. And I looked around and I could, I could see the house in the distance, but I, there was no front door or anything. And I saw these three chairs in the paddock. Oh sitting in the long grass under a big tree and there was one person sitting in the chair so i walked over and i said is this where you sit to have a reading with this person she said yes he's he's just finishing up with my friend so i'm sitting in this chair in the long grass the last reading went <clears throat> and i'm sitting there waiting waiting in the long grass in the heat of summer <laughs> And I'm waiting 10 minutes, nobody's around. So I walked over to the house and it's a house on stilts. Okay. And I was walking around trying to find out where I was supposed to go. And then a man came out in a sarong. And Lovely. I won't describe him. No. He came out in a sarong and bare feet. And he said, have you, come, have you come for a reading? And I said, yes. And of course, I'm quite a formal reader. So he was the opposite to me, very informal. He said, come and sit down here. So we were under the house with all the junk. You know, the sort of- Under the house? Under the house where the stilts were. Oh. There was all this junk everywhere. Oh. Boxes and like old car parts. And then I, he took me to a card table. You know, those folding card tables yeah. <laughs> with two chairs. So I sat down and went, hmm, it's a bit unusual. <laughs> Not like my office that's all cosy with cups of tea and incense. So he sits down and I put my <laughs> handbag on the ground and yeah. he said, put your handbag in your lap because the snakes will get in it. <laughs> <laughs> I looked down and I thought, maybe he's right. Oh, oh my god. So oh my god. <laughs> we did the reading.
reading, he told me off because I didn't bring photos. So he gave me a knuckle wrap from the, the beginning. I felt like a very naughty girl because <laughs> I didn't bring my photos. I had them on my phone, silly me yeah. being ultra modern. Yeah. And he said, no, I want a hard copy. So I got a knuckle wrap. And I kept looking down the ground to see if there were snakes. <laughs> I, I, would have, I would have put my feet up on the desk. To I, know, I, I wanted to do a little crouch on the seat. <laughs> <coughs> so I had my reading and uh, he put the fear of God into me about the issue I was going through. And actually it wasn't right in the end, even though this man had this incredible reputation for being prophetic. Yes. Um, didn't work for me. And I don't, maybe I was put off by the snake thing. I don't know. But um, anyway, that was quite possibly the worst <laughs> reading I've ever had. Has that. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my God. Why does he take me under the house amongst the junk? Oh my God. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, what about you? What's um, your worst reading? I've got a couple. Um, and <laughs> you know, life's funny. So I went to this woman and she did a reading of Egyptian cards, right? And she in this would be 20 years ago. And in those days, I think she charged what would be equivalent to 150 bucks today, right? And so it was expensive. And I went there and she put the cards out. And then she got her book <laughs> that tells you the meaning of the cards and looked at each card and read from the book. And I sat there going, I could do this. And I looked at her and I, in the end, when she, I said to her, do you think you, are you going to read from the book through the whole thing? And she said, oh, yeah. I said, so how long have you been doing this? Oh, years. I went, right. So I'm paying all this money for you to read from the book. Thing, no, no. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, because I, so, I paid her and left, but it was all rubbish, but. Funnily enough, you know, the world's a small place, Janine, because I was talking to a very good friend of mine at the time who was a great trance medium, very good trance medium, and a tarot reader and had been doing it for years. And I was telling her the story. And she said, oh, she said, what's her name? And I told her, and she said, that's my very good friend. And I went, oh, oh, dear. Okay, well, this is... And she said, you know, Jenny, she's never told me she read Egyptian cards. And, you know, she's always complaining she has no money, but I couldn't work out how she could afford to go overseas all the time. I said, well, now you know. <laughs> so it always it? comes up to bite you. You should always be honest, <laughs> especially with wow. friends. So, um, <laughs> so I thought that was a funny, funny a thing. One. Yeah. Now, you told me the other day about the one in the pub. Oh, yes. So my friend and I were just down on a Friday night, this was years ago, and we went to the pub and um, to have a drink before we were going out for dinner. And there was a guy sitting in a group in a corner and we were sitting near to him. And he said, and she said to him, well, what do you do? And he said, I draw like spirit art and I draw your soul, right? And he said, I don't charge anything. I'm just doing it as a hobby. And so <laughs> we had it done. <laughs> and she had it done first. And he took ages to do it. And we thought, this would be good. This would be really interesting. And then he said, here it is. And he, and he handed her the piece of paper. And we looked at it and we went, oh, my God. It was the most caricature, disfigured, gross portrait I've ever seen and she said to him this doesn't look anything like me and he said no no that's my interpretation <laughs> I burst into laughter and he said do you want one I said not today thanks <laughs> that's why I don't see it framed in your office that's right <laughs> this is my interpretation I thought man he's never going to win any friends is he how much did you pay Nothing. He, he was doing it voluntary, but I mean, really. 
it was so hilarious. I just, we just laughed all the way because we just thought it was so funny that Never someone before. could do, you know, let me do your portrait and, and, and I'll interpret you. And it was so revolting. <laughs> he thought it was pre pretty good. So that was funny. Never do a spirit reading while you're drunk. That's what I think. <laughs> but it was a funny night. <laughs> that so. actually reminds me, I went to a, a psychic festival and I don't ever go to those things. Yeah. And I'm really interested in uh, face reading. So face analysis. Yep. And I've been interested a long time. The Indians do a very good job. And there's a well-known Indian in... Um, an Indian man in Queensland who, who wrote a great book. So I went to this stall and I realised that these were the students of this man that I'd studied before. And I said, okay, can I do a face reading? So I paid my $30 and they told me that the left side of my face was different to the right. And that means my emotional side is out of balance with my intellectual side. I'm like, yeah. And then I said, that's it. I said, that's it. I said, <laughs> I thought I was paying for you to tell me what that imbalance was all about. No, they said, oh, we can't tell you. We just know you're out of balance. And I was quite stunned. I thought, if that's all you've learnt in all of these months of studying, you've been ripped off. <laughs> Because everybody's face is asymmetrical. Absolutely. Okay? The Absolutely. point is to understand what the asymmetry is about. So yeah. anyway, that just reminded me of that. It's just hilarious, isn't it? I just find it so funny. Well, I had another reading um, <clears throat> when I came to Melbourne. I came with my mother and my sister to see a drama here in Melbourne. And um, <laughs> and I said, look, said to my sister, um, listen, I know this really good psychic in Melbourne, let's go visit her. She's elderly, right? She'd be elderly now. She'd be close to 80 now. I said, but she was really good. Okay, so we made an appointment out. We go by taxi to whatever suburb, I can't even remember now. And we walked into her quite large unit and it was about oh, half past three in the afternoon. Anyway... <laughs> As the day grew colder because it was in winter, she said, I can't put the heating on because it's all blown up and there's no heating. And we went, oh, okay. So um, it got colder and colder and she was making us do all these things. We had to do this drawing and then we had to do holding flowers. So she read the flower aura. And then about six o'clock and she fast around that it just took forever to get our readings because there was two of us and by six o'clock we were freezing cold because it was like three degrees and my sister started to cough because she and she kept saying under her breath I'm going to kill you I'm going to kill you and, and then all of a sudden this woman says stop we've got to stop and I went oh thank god and then she said so come into the kitchen so we went into the kitchen and she made us cook um, chapatis in a fry pan. <laughs> so there we are in this freezing cold house, coughing our heart out because we were so... I mean, we could see the fog coming out of our mouth. It was that bitterly cold. Cooking these chapatis, which neither us wanted, because she was elderly, we didn't want to say no. So now I would... But, you know, it's really hard. And then we go back into the lounge with these chapatis, which no one wanted. And then she proceeded to read the bones and all this sort of stuff. None of which after three hours, four hours of freezing, with no joke, the smoke from the coal, fog coming out, the mist when we spoke, it was so cold. And I said, so I went to the ladies and I called a taxi and then I came out and said, oh, the taxi will be here in a minute. We've got to go. She said, oh, I've got so much more I want to do with you. And I said, oh, we'll come back another time. <laughs> oh, man, that wow. was a long day. <laughs> that, is, that is a pearl, Jennifer. Yeah, she obviously had deteriorated. That's all with the snakes. <laughs> yes, Making I think so. I think so. Making chapatis. It's never happened again since. But, I yeah. happen to love chapatis, but you don't. 
Yeah, you don't want to eat. You don't want to do that in a house cold. that's like one degree. No. <laughs> that is so funny. And and look, there's so many more stories that we all have. Yeah. But what do you think you've learnt from all the bad readings? Um, I think um, what I've learned, <laughs> I've learned that you you've. I think people, if you're going to do readings, at least treat it like a profession. No, you know, have a proper place to read, have it clean, um, have it, um, and don't waffle too much, which I can sometimes do. But um, just get to the point, you know, and find out. I don't know. So I don't do tarot, so I've never been able to read tarot properly. And I know you you read tarot. But, you know, you just need to, to get to the point and find out what people really want rather than just give them general stuff. And if you're a person coming to a psychic or a medium, you know, have in your head what you're really coming for. Don't sit there and say, I just want a general thing um, because you really need to be more um, succinct about what you're coming for, I think. I think that helps everybody do a really good job. Mm. And um, and don't come to try and trick a psychic reader. I don't think. I think you just you should go with good intent. Um, yeah, it's a good point. When you when you have these bad readings, you become a good client and a good reader. Yeah, you do. You know how to become a good client, and and the the more you focus with good intent, the better the outcome. Absolutely, because energies affect the reader. So if you come in like this you tell me it's it's puts a bad vibe already mm. you know and i don't know you know people forget readers are very sensitive and i know when they did a lot of scientific trials of people like john edwards and alison dubois and some of the english you know if if the atmosphere wasn't good in in the scientific um place they were doing it all the mediums didn't didn't do too well so they had to pick scientists that had an open nine not it's okay to be sceptical, but not a completely closed and negative. You've just got to have yeah, an open right. mind, I think. That's and right. And also, sometimes you've got to click with the reader. Some people, you know, you don't click with everybody. And I think I've, I've had really good readings in very bad environments as mm. well. So well, the, the reader's been great, but the environment's been appalling. Yeah, I've been. Well, I've had amazing readings in a shoebox, and it didn't do much for the rapport that needs to happen during the the reading. So, right. you know, you know, you're you're a Libran, and I'm a Taurian. We're both into aesthetics, so mm. it is really important to get your aesthetics right when you bring someone in because they've got very very complex, deep issues to talk about. And if you're in an abrasive, noisy, unclean environment, then they will shut down and you shut down as a reader, which is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think you're right. I mean, I've read in some very sparsely um, furnished rooms, like with just a table and two chairs, nothing else. And, but if the person coming is really open-minded and has positive attitude, it will go well. You're quite correct. So, um, but I certainly wouldn't take someone under the, <laughs> under the house and <laughs> make them, uh, especially making you sit in long grass when there's snakes around. What was he thinking? My God. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what a lot of people are thinking, I tell you, but I know... I know it makes me extra professional every time I have those readings. I go, right, it's a professional transaction. This person deserves all of my concentration. Mm -hmm. They've got very major things going on, divorces, deaths, you know, children with mental health issues. It's a very serious business. I and I've, so. I've got to pay the whole experience justice by treating it very seriously. And absolutely, absolutely. And, you know... Um, I think it's a matter of, of your own pride to respect uh, the person coming in who's going to trust you to look at their problem. Right. Mm. That's right. So a couple of funny tales there. Yeah. Maybe next time we can talk about our best readings. That would be good. So me. let's put our thinking caps on because I'm going to have to 
go back in time and work out which ones are my best readings. So we'll do that next time. Okay. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. See ya. Thank you.